What up, it's me, A to Z, and we're back with more Pokemon Black. Last time, after arriving at the bustling entertainment center of New York, Nimbasa City, we actually left town again. We went back down to Route 4 and explored a new area, the Desert Resort, that we skipped previously, but we decided to go back there, fight a few trainers, do a little bit of training. We picked up a new fossil, actually. We had access to two fossils. We picked up the cover fossil, revived that into a Tortogo, who was actually our newest team member, Jonathan. Welcome him aboard. Uh, I trained him up a little bit. He's now level 26. So yeah, we now have our fourth team member, Jonathan. And in this episode, we are going to explore this incredibly bustling city of Nimbasa. There is a lot to see and do here. So let's actually check out a few buildings. I know one of these buildings has something important. Please, I hope this is my... Oh my god, I was right. Who would have thought this was actually... It's like I know this game. We get HMO 4 strength. And he's telling us to feel like a powerful man. A Pokemon that you use strength can push a big rock even when it's not fighting. If you want to push some rocks around, go to Route 16. Thump, thump. So we're going to use uh, this HM for strength. I think we're going to teach it to... Where is it now? Here we go. Strength. And we're going to teach this to... Herdier. There we go. I was hoping Herdier could learn it. So we're going to get rid of... I think we're going to tackle. We don't really need it. Strength outclasses it big time. <laughs> All right, so now that we have strength, we can push those giant boulders around. And those boulders were, are a lot bigger, as you'll have noticed, in black and white compared to Diamond and Pearl in previous games, where those rocks were pretty much, like, the size of you. Shiny Croc Rock. I wonder what colors they are. Ah, Croc Rock. I feel like... that. Yeah, sorry. People say... Oh, no, no, no. People say shiny Pokemon look like they're gleaming when they come out of the grass. So this was just mentioning a mechanic called shiny Pokemon, which we actually didn't run into in Fire Red. So I guess I can just quickly explain it. Uh, there is a 1 in over 8,000 chance that a wild Pokemon you run into will be shiny. Really, the only difference is that shiny Pokemon just have different coloration. That's it. So if you have a shiny Pokemon, it's just for bragging rights. Anyway, so here we have these stadiums. Big stadium and small stadium. Or little stadium. Small court. There we go. So the small court has tennis and basketball, and the big stadium has baseball, football, and soccer. So these are actually really good places to do some training. As you'll notice, we got baseball players here. I'm an infielder. I hurt my hand, so I can't write autographs. Sorry. Say, how'd you sign your trainer card? Oh, that's just talking about how you can, like, actually physically sign your trainer card. But as you can see here, yeah, this is an actual sports arena. <laughs> they have sports arena here. I think this is supposed to be based off of Madison Square Garden, which... That's weird that there's a baseball field here, because Madison Square Garden is basketball. But then again, that's what they have small court for. <laughs> So I guess this is a fusion of Madison Square Garden slash City Field, Yankee Stadium, whatever, you know. But they also have football here, which is which is weird. Anyway, I guess I can just mention the schedule. On Monday, Thursday, and Sunday, they have baseball. Tuesday and Friday, they got soccer. And uh, Wednesday and Saturday, they have football. So here is the amusement park area. We're actually going to go there later. First thing I want to do is... Okay, we're going to ignore you. First thing I want to do is actually head out here. The musical theater is always looking for participants. Yeah, they're gonna have to find somebody else. Anyway. So once we go through here, let's talk to you. Let's train Pokemon vigorously. You who like training, and you who don't like training. Let's train our Pokemon by giving them these. And we get the Macho Brace. The Macho Brace is actually a very good item when it comes to uh, effort value training. A Pokemon's speed decreases when it holds a Macho Brace, but it grows stronger. It's a tool that's a bit difficult to use, but that's the way it goes. So if you give a Pokemon the Macho Brace, their speed gets cut in half, but... It doubles the effort values that you get when you fight Pokemon. So this is really good for effort value training. Anyway, once we head out here... We have made it to Route 16, a brand new route! Which, there's really not much for us to do here. This is only useful for, like, extra training, but there are some new Pokemon that you can run into here, which I will go over right now. First Pokemon you can run into is Trubbish. It's a pile of garbage. No, like, it's literally a pile of garbage. I'm not taking jabs at it. It's actually a pile of garbage. I don't know what possessed Game Freak to make a Pokemon based on a garbage bag, but here it is. We gotta go over it. So Trubbish is a bit of an odd choice. It's a poison type, but unfortunately, poison types aren't extremely useful in this generation since fairies don't exist. So when Trubbish evolves into Garbodor, or Garbodor, I call it Garbodor, it can do a somewhat decent job at attacking, but... Instead, what Garbodor has done is it's carved out a niche as a trap setter, since it has access to toxic spikes naturally, and since it can learn spikes via breeding. So yeah, its bulk is pretty respectable, so it doesn't do a terrible job of setting traps, so it can usually live a turn or two before it goes down. But it's... I don't know if I'd recommend Garbodor for an in-game team, but it could potentially be useful to you competitively. 
However, there are definitely better trap setters out there, so it really kind of is a matter of preference if you want to use Garbodor or not. Anyway, uh, next Pokemon you can run into is Minchino. Minchino is a very interesting choice for a normal type. Minchino is a pretty fast physical attacker that has, a that has access to some interesting moves, including an exclusive multi-hit move called Tail Slap. If you give Minchino a shiny stone, it will evolve into Chinchino. Ooh, what's wrong with Taunt? Nah, we don't need it. But yeah, Chinchino is a very interesting Pokemon. Its move pool consists of some very interesting multi-hit moves, like, uh, what's it? Like Rock Blast and Bullet Seed. And those moves might seem like really odd moves for it, but you'll see that it has the hidden ability of Skill Link. Skill Link is an ability that makes multi-hit moves always hit the maximum amount of five times. I have seen some Chinchinos do some crazy sweeps with this ability, since Chinchino is naturally fast and it's actually pretty strong, and especially when you slap a Choice Band on it. Like, Tail Slap on this thing with a Choice Band is dangerous. But again, Skill Link is a hidden ability, meaning it is not easy to obtain at all. However, Technician actually isn't a terrible ability, since it improves the power of the multi-hit moves, since they just have generally low base power as it is. Basically, all I'm saying is just pick any ability except Cute Charm, because Cute Charm just sucks. But overall, Machino is a very competent normal type, and it could be useful to your team. Anyway, uh, the next two Pokemon that you can run into here are actually version exclusives. So the first Pokemon here is uh, Gothita. Gothita is a psychic type Pokemon exclusive to Pokemon Black. So Gothita's design, as you can tell, it's based off of uh, Lolita fashion, which, you know, that's just a thing. But oddly enough, male Gothitas exist. Uh huh. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let that sink in for you guys. Anyway, regardless of that, in battle, Gothita's role is that of a bulky attacker, and it actually has some, uh, it's got some pretty competent defenses, and uh, it's got a respectable special attack to boot. It's not extremely fast, but it can get past that, uh, that unimpressive speed, because its bulk and its special attack's pretty good. When it's, as it evolves into Gothita, its bulk improves and it'll learn some more powerful, uh, and tricky moves. It actually is- What about Jonathan? Why do I keep getting credit? God damn it! Ugh. Anyway, as I was saying, it can learn moves like Thunderbolt, oddly enough, and Shadow Ball and everything, and that has access to Calm Mind. Its final form, Gothitelle, is very interesting. First of all, its cry is extremely creepy. Like, you'll hear its cry is the goddamn psycho violence. Anyway. Uh, in battle, Gothitelle's bulk is very respectable, so one hit killing it will not be an easy task. Alright, I'm just gonna go heal while I talk about Gothitelle. However, if you are able to get access to its hidden ability of Shadow Tag, Gothitelle becomes incredibly dangerous. What Shadow Tag does is it prevents any Pokémon from switching out. Like, any Pokémon. Even Ghost Types. Like, the Ghost Type exception has not come into play yet. Like, your only way of switching out a Shadow Tag is using pivot moves like U-Turn, Volt Switch, or Baton Pass. So by trapping certain Pokemon, Gothitelle just can be free to set up, or sweep, or do whatever it wants if it traps the right Pokemon. However, since Shadow Tag is a hidden ability, it's very hard to obtain, so really Gothitelle will be just kind of average, since its only other ability is Frisk. So, Gothitelle's kind of average unless you can somehow get access to Shadow Tag. So Shadow Tag's okay, it's, I mean, Shadow Tag's okay. Gothitelle's okay even without Shadow Tag, but Shadow Tag is what really really makes it dangerous, because that ability is utterly stupid. Gavitals with that ability are banned. <laughs> and since that ability itself is banned. Anyway, if you are playing Pokemon White, you will instead, uh, have access to the Pokemon Solosis, which is another Psychic type. Unlike Gothita, whose roles are meant to be more bulky, Solosis is meant to hit extremely hard in terms of special attacking. Like, its special attack is freaking 105 in its base form, that's how hard it can hit. As Duotion, it hits harder, but its bulk doesn't improve by that much. But it's really when it evolves into uh, Reuniclus, its final form, that's when its bulk improves really considerably. Reuniclus has access to some really, really good abilities. Overcoat is alright, but it's honestly just an inferior Magikarp, so you're far better off having Magikarp on it. However, if you're able to get Regenerator on it, Regenerator is very respectable since it actually gives Reuniclus a chance to, um, to heal every day. It, it gives it more survivability. I will warn you though. Oh, and here we are, we're using strength. So, so Hurtier, push those boulders. But I will warn you, Reuniclus is slow. I, 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 it's really slow. Like, slower than Caracosta slow. So, unless you got Trick Room up, you are legit not gonna outspeed anything. So, don't expect it. But, 
Really? This thing works well on your Trick Room. Like, it's a really good Trick Room Pokemon. I've seen people build sets off of uh, with Trick Room with this Pokemon in mind. And to be perfectly honest, I think Pokemon White Pokemon White players got the better end of the stick on this one. Because Reuniclus, I think it's better than Gotta Tell. But yep, those are all the new Pokemon that you can run into in this route. And you can actually run into them in the next route to the to the west, Route 5, but I figured I'll just go here so I can go over them now, just, just for your own knowledge, in case you wanted to pick them up, because you can actually use them for the upcoming gym. Oh, come on, don't, don't you do that now. Don't you do that now. I just realized half of this video was bios. Whatever. Alright, I'm good with that. I taught Jonathan Rod Tomb, which is going to be a very invaluable move for it, because it's extremely slow. And it can just slow down the opponent. Why Why is it wasting its time iron defensing? Whatever. I don't care. Jonathan, just use another Rock Tomb on it. Finish it off really quickly. And then that will take care of you. Really, the main main purpose of this episode was just to get some training, to show off some uh, extra roots, and just to show, you know, just what extra Pokemon you can run into. Because, again, there is a gym here in Mbasa City. Stop doing that. Oh, at least it's better than Iron Defense. So, once I slow it down, I can just Rock Tomb it again, and then... Or that will happen. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Ancient Power it. Stop stalling! Stap it! Stap it! Like Arnold says. Now I just thought a Kindergarten Cop for some stupid reason. Like, there's a part in that movie where he's... Where Arnold... Where Arnold... Or Bruno... <laughs> now I'm remembering my Bruno voice. Those were the days. A pleasant wind is carrying a defeat. Now it's stopping here. Anyway, so what I want to do really quickly is just show off. Hang on, there's another thing here. I, ha I still have that rappel up, right? I do. Okay, there is something here that I want to pick up. Is that it? I don't know if that's it. Let's keep Jonathan off front because I have no idea what this trainer has. Yeah, let's just fight you because I'm thinking that this is where that item that I was thinking of is. All right, let me just fight you really quickly because this is again going back to that. Uh, good, she only has one. Swadloon. Okay. Oh crap, that's a grass type. Oh crap. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I don't trust Jonathan. I'm gonna get Razor Leaf and I'm gonna die. Will get out here, please, <laughs> and just air cutter it. Now I I know for a fact this is going back to that uh, that trainer back in. Uh. Oh. Whatever. Will finish it. This is going back to that trainer in, uh, Nacreen City, who, uh, was, was giving out those, um, what's it? Those type items. Jonathan Gross, level 27. That's good. Alright. And I think this item here is going to be... No, TM66 Payback. Then where is it? Hang on, it's around here somewhere. What Payback does, it's basically just... You do double the damage if you get hit, uh, the turn before. Where is it now? I know there's something you can push with strength. Okay, okay. I know. I know where. I know what I do. We have to go through like a hidden back back pathway. No, I'm stupid. Oh, no, I, 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 I'm really stupid. We, we have to go back through there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember how to play this game. It's been a while. <laughs> like, not, not even just general. I mean, like, just the whole game. Not that it's been a while since I recorded, because I recorded like two days ago. Back here is the charcoal. So this is why you want to get the mystic water, because now we already have the charcoal, and I'm going to give that to our friend Kevin. There we go. All right. So we're pretty much done here. I guess I can just mention really quickly, if you go through here... Alright, we did fight you. If you go through here, this is the entrance to... The Lost... The, the Lost Lorne Forest. Okay, I, I had to remember the name for a second. I knew it was the Forlorn... I thought it was the Forlorn Forest for a second, but it's actually the Lost Lorne Forest. So this is a place where you can just pretty much catch the same Pokemon we went over, and some, uh, some new ones. But there is an event here. There is an event here, but I'm not going to go over it now. I am going to go over it much later. But this is a pretty good place for training, if you want. So I just wanted to mention that the Lost Lord Forest does exist, and you can go here if you want. You can also catch the Pokemon here. But that's pretty much Route 16. That's all I wanted to show up on Route 16. Anyway, uh, excuse me, I'm going to go heal real quick, and I, pff, perfect timing. I will be right back, and I will meet you outside the, uh, the entrance to the amusement park. So here we are, outside of the amusement park. Now, if you'll recall when we were in Numbasa City a few episodes back, when we first got here, there were some plasma grunts uh, harassing this old man. And that old man gave us a bike. I completely forgot about the bike, and I'm going to be perfectly honest. But yeah, and then they decided to retreat into the amusement park. So I say it's high time we chase after them. You're looking for Team Plasma, right? They ran into the amusement park. Come with me.
they're not here. Let's ride the Ferris wheel and see if we can spot them. I love Ferris wheels. The circular motion, the mechanics, they're like collections of elegant formulas. First, I must tell you, I am the king of Team Plasma. Getz has asked me to work with him to save the Pokémon. I wonder how many Pokémon exist in this world. Holy information drop, Batman! <laughs> You were the king of Team Plasma this whole time, and you failed to tell me! And Like, you can't keep secrets like that from me! How could you do that to me? You have broken my trust! My lord, N! You're safe, sire! There's no problem. You're part of the people who we brought to help us save the Pokémon, so you're under my protection as well. Go quickly, and let my battle cover your retreat. Now then, Adam, do you follow my logic? I'm, a, I'm about as lost as any of you guys, but I'm just gonna say yes. If true, your words please me. Ah, then, the future I envision. Perhaps I can't beat you here now, but I'll battle you to buy time for these members of Team Plasma to get away. So, yep, this whole time, N was the leader of Team Plasma. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is just out of nowhere. N was behind the scenes. It makes sense because you saw him sitting outside the meeting of Accumula Town, so really, he was in on it the whole time. Anyway, his first Pokémon is Sandile, so his team has changed once again, and now I can finally bring up what makes N's team so unique. So you notice, in the previous battle, he had Pit of Timber and Time Pole. Now he's got Sandile, and as you'll see, he's about to send out Scrag. And of course, in his fir our first battle, he had Purloin. N's team changes based on where you are. He has caught Pokémon based on, like, the, the closest area nearby. So he's been catching Pokémon from Route 4 slash, you know, the Desert Resort. And then previously, he had Pokémon from Pinwheel Forest. But those other Pokémon he had, he actually lets them go. His next Pokémon is Darumaka. All right, uh, Tony, get out here. But yeah, his team changes based on where you fight him. And I actually think that's a really unique uh, mechanic. I like that a lot. <laughs> like, that shows that they put a lot of time and effort into making N very unique. The fact that he catches new Pokémon based on where he was and where you are, and that he frees the other Pokémon. That shows how much he cares about Pokémon and, how, you know, how he's a warrior of peace. However, like, if you think about it, something about N, even though he's the king of Team Plasma, seems a little bit off. Compared to, like, the rest of the Team Plasma members and the Sages and Getzes. That will be explored, I promise you that, but it's just, it's something to know. Alright, Kevin, this might be a stupid idea. Even if I lose, is it different from the future I saw? This might be a stupid idea, but I think a Flame Charge... We'll be fine. Air Cutter will do... Yeah, and then a Flame Charge will increase my speed, and then you will die after the next Flame Charge. And then since we have Charcoal, it's gonna do a lot more damage. Your Pokémon look happy. Well, of course, because I don't abuse Kevin. <laughs> Kevin and I are bros. We've been bros for life. Alright, and that's it. And has been defeated. The result was the same, but you, who are you? You're quite strong, but I have a future that I must change, and for that future. I'll defeat the champion and become unbeatable, unlike any other. I'll make all trainers free their Pokémon, just try and stop me. If you want to be together with Pokémon, your only hope is to collect the badges from each area and head for the Pokémon League. Try and stop me there if you dare. If your conviction is not strong enough, you will never be able to defeat me. We have learned the truth. N is the king of Team Plasma, and he's got a goal. To apparently use the power of a legendary Pokémon to become undefeatable, defeat the Pokémon League, and force trainers to free their Pokémon. Is that what he really wants, though? I feel like we'll find out as we continue through our journey. Anyway, over here is actually the Pokémon Gym. So you know what that means. Next time, we're getting another Gym Badge. I know, it's been a bit of a while, so yep, next time we are going to head into Nimbasa City Gym, get our fourth badge. But until then, we're going to cut it here. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back with more Pokemon Black.